before we start off with the ceremony, I would like to acquaint you with the schedule that we will be following for today ceremony. Today we are here to witness the pan-religious and lethaline ceremony on the eve of Platinum Jubilee of Battle of Kohima. In order to commemorate the day, the events scheduled are as first the pan-religious ceremony, then lethaline ceremony by various guests and dignitaries, then a brief on Battle of Kohima by Captain Deepika Badwa, which will be followed by a band display by a band of Assam Rifles, after that, a speech by a dignitary, which will be followed by a vote of thanks by Commander Sector 5, Assam Rifles. Post the address, a guided tour of war cemetery will be organized by a team of officers and JCOs of three Naga Hill Assam Rifles. And after that, you all are requested to join us for the refreshments near the parking area. Thank you. Mungkin nama ialah Report Post Ha? Mungkin nama Report Post Report Post Report Post Thank you. 
छिंदी शस्त्रे नयन दहति पावक न चैन क्लेदयो न शोषयति मारु हाप्शी स्वर्ग जिवा वा भोक्षे मही तत्तिष्टकते युद्धा कृत निश्चय ओ शाति शाति शाति
May I request you all to move upstairs and settle down. Ladies and gentlemen, I welcome you on behalf of Major General P.C. Nair, Youth Seva Medal, Inspector General Assam Rifles North, to today's commemoration at this historic war cemetery. We have gathered here to commemorate 75th anniversary of the Battle of the Kohima, to pay tribute to some of the finest and bravest men and women spanning many countries. The Battle of Kohima was one of the fiercest battles of the World War II and is also referred to as Stalingrad of the East. Thousands of Allied and the Japanese soldiers laid down their lives for their nation. This war cemetery was established in 1946 and was inaugurated by Field Marshal Sir William Slim, 14th Army Commander. This memorial stands at the actual battleground. The cemetery has 1,421 graves and 917 names of Sikhs and Hindus inscribed on the wall of remembrance. The Battle of Kohima was fought from 4th April to 22nd June 1944 in and around the town of the Kohima. The, the battle took place in three stages. From 3rd April to 16th April, the Japanese attempted to capture the Kohima Ridge, that is where you are seated. By mid-April, the Japanese had gained the most of the Kohima Ridge, except this small portion in front of you. From 18th April to 13th May, two mountain div reinforcements counter-attacked to regain the lost positions, but the Japanese still continued to block the Kohima Imphal Road. From 16th May to 22nd June, the Allied forces cleared the road blocks on the Dimapur Imphal Road, and the battle ended on 22nd June with the physical link-up of Allied forces at milestone 109, which is about 35 kilometers short of Imphal. 
one of the fiercest close combat battle took place in and around the tennis court of deputy commissioner's bungalow which is why this battle is also known as battle of the tennis court or battle under the cherry tree both sides suffered heavy casualties more than 10000 lives were lost in this battle but it has been 75 years since then while we must remember the fallen soldiers irrespective of their nationality we also need to look towards the future with remembrance reconciliation rebirth ladies and gentlemen now i present to you the pipes and drums of the combined band of five sector assam rifles who will be paying tribute to the immortal souls
pues vamos. Sí, a ver si gana. It's an honor for me to 
be here as Vice Chairman of the Commonwealth War Graves Commission and to welcome you to this remarkable cemetery. It's a place that I've been trying to get to for about the last 25 years and I'm delighted that uh, this is the occasion that I've managed to achieve that, that long ambition. I'd like to uh, thank the uh, excellent Pipes and Drums for, for that wonderful tribute to the immortal souls that lie here. It's a wonderful uh, evocation of days gone by. I'd also like to thank the Naga authorities uh, whose support for the Commission's work here is absolutely vital and very much appreciated. We could not continue our work here without that support and I thank them for it. There are some other thank yous to make to the Indian Army uh, who also give us much support and in particular to uh, three Assam rifles for supporting us generally, but for organizing this uh, excellent uh, event today. It's so important that we, uh, in addition to retired personnel, we keep the link to serving personnel in the armed forces. Uh, it's very important that we uh, make sure that those serving personnel understand what we do. Whenever I read of the contribution of Indian troops to the wars of the, 20, of the 20th century, I'm astonished by the numbers involved. You will probably know that there were 1.4 million Indian troops who served in World War I, and there were 2.5 million who served in World War II. They made a massive contribution to the Allied war effort in both wars. Very sadly, over 160,000 of them were killed. The Commonwealth War Graves Commission commemorates all of them in one way or another. And of course, some of them lie here in this cemetery. Now, most of you here today know the story of the terrific battle uh, that raged here in 1944 better than I do. And we've had a very good uh, short description of that battle. There are many tales of personal heroism, of survival in appalling conditions, and against almost overwhelming odds. Every time I read the story, I discover new reasons to be in awe of what people did on the very ground on which we sit or stand here today. Indian Army and British Army units fought here shoulder to shoulder, side by side, Last evening at the Governor's Banquet, we heard the song, Stand By Me, and it struck me as especially appropriate for this battle. People stood by each other. Local people in this region, of course, were caught up in the fighting in many different ways, and they must have suffered terribly too. And we should not forget that our opponents here fought with great bravery and suffered immense hardships. They who were once our enemies are now our friends. The battle here was not just the turning point in the war in Asia, it was one of the greatest and most important battles in history. That is one of the reasons why this cemetery is one of the best known anywhere in the world. Another reason is the famous epitaph on the two division memorial here, lower down the hill. I have heard the Kohima epitaph read out in ceremonies in many parts of the world. Its words perfectly sum up both the, both the sacrifice of those who are commemorated here and their aspirations for the future. They truly gave their today for our tomorrow and we must all work together to ensure that their hopes are fulfilled. The War Graves Commission commemorates 1.7 million Commonwealth dead of the two world wars in 153 countries. We do it in order to honor those who died and so that their families have a place of serenity and peace where they can come to remember them. And I think this cemetery is very typical of that. We have one other purpose as well, because of course our headstones and memorials send a message to the leaders and decision makers of today 
a message about the human cost of war. Back in 1920, when the Commission had just started its work, its first chairman, Winston Churchill, said in a debate in Parliament that people would be visiting our cemeteries and memorials at least 300 years into the future. Well, we in the Commission have recently completed our first 100 years, and I'm pleased to assure you that with your help and support, we are very well set up for the next 200 years. I would like to finish by thanking the Commission staff here who look after this beautiful cemetery. It's not an easy task. There are many challenges, not least the very large number of people that come to visit here, which is a, a good problem for us to have. But as you can see, they do a fantastic job. We owe them a great debt, and I know that their work is very much appreciated, not just locally here, but all around the world. Thank you for joining us here today to pay tribute to those who lost their lives and are commemorated here 75 years ago. May I now request Brigadier Sandeep Singh Sharda, Commander Fight Sector Assam Rifles, to deliver a vote of thanks. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I feel honored to be here today to share this important day of remembrance with you all. This day is not a day to remember battles or wars, but a day to remember those who have made ultimate sacrifice in service of their nations. Martyrs are symbols of exceptional leadership and heroism in the face of difficult circumstances. There is no greater sacrifice known to man than to lay down his life in the defense of his nation. To commemorate the 75th anniversary of the Battle of Kohima, we are here together, which by itself is that pro propagates universal peace and harmony. I am thankful to Sir Dominic Anthony Gerard Esquith, British High Commissioner to India, Vice Admiral Sir Timothy Lawrence, and the delegation of the CWGC, Air Vice Marshal Alistair Reid, and the officers of the British Army and the Air Force, the Nagaland State Government representatives, that is, the Director General of Police and the Commissioner, Mrs. Celia Grover, Mrs. Akiko MacDonald, and Mrs. Sylvia May. But most importantly, we are thankful to Mr. Richard Day, Sipoy Zasire Vire Angami and the other veterans of the battle as also the kith and kin of the martyrs for attending this solemn commemoration event. I am also thankful to the entire team of the officers and men of Assam Rifles who have put in their best to organize today's event. Thank you and Jai Hind. As I finish, let me quote the epitaph etched on the Tudif Memorial in this very war cemetery. When you go home, tell them of us and say, for your tomorrow, we gave our today. We have now come to the end of the program. I would request you to move towards the wall of fame, which is right behind your sitting area. Our officers from three Assam Rifles, the very same battalion which participated in the Battle of Kohima, will conduct you around the war cemetery followed by refreshments, and I will request you to be at refreshment area by 11.30 a.m. Jai Hind.